Alright, let's go! It's time to check out some time-honored classic cartoons, remade into disastrous train wrecks. When a cartoon gets remade, for some reason it is standard practice to put it in the hands of people with absolutely no interest in the original cartoon. Even to the point where the new team won't watch a single episode of the original show. Hell, sometimes the teams outright hate the source material and do everything they can to sabotage the original creators, devastating fans in their wake. These reboots range from cheap CG low-budget snore fests to frightfully bad remakes that outright insult the viewers, often being made purely to capitalize on an otherwise good franchise. So let's check out the top 10 worst cartoon reboots. And as always, if you do like these cartoons, that's great. It's just my silly personal opinion, and I'm glad you can enjoy these remakes when I can't. Anyway, on to the countdown. Number 10. Quack Pack. The ultimate 90s teen corporate pandering machine. Huey, Dewey, and Louie have gone from charming and mischievous woodchucks to just the most outright ugly representations of the 90s ever put to paper. Someone's been reading self-help books again. Pitiful. These three are like Johnny Test on steroids. Every mannerism, every single word they speak is a sad, cringeworthy attempt to appeal to the 90s kids. But to its credit, I actually liked all the adults. Donald is among my favorite cartoon characters, and he's just his charming self throughout the whole series. And Daisy has never been such an interesting, well-developed character. It was a shame all these adult characters were constantly overshadowed by our loud, cool main characters. Because that's all 90s kids wanted, wasn't it? To be gnarly and rad. The first episode is about how the boys can avoid cleaning their room. Quack Pack is so pandering that it makes my face hurt. I'd honestly much rather watch Donald Duck for 20 minutes than watch these 90s teen sitcom rejects play Who's Got the Ugliest Haircut? And coming in at number 9, Powerpuff Girls 2016. Let's start with the elephant in the room, because honestly, it's not the absolute worst. But I can't think of a reboot that disappointed so many fans of the original series more than Powerpuff Girls 2016. The main problem I personally found with the cartoon was that it focuses on the three main characters, Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup, who were the least interesting part of the original cartoon. I watched the original cartoon for characters like the mayor, Mojo Jojo, him, Fuzzy Lumpkins, and how they worked off the main characters. Many of the episodes seem like a befuddled mess with no real structure or story, often seeming like a random series of jokes and memes. OMG! Yes! With Mojo Jojo occasionally popping up with some strange emasculating costume. There just isn't the multi-layered jokes and adult appeal the original had, and that's disappointing. What made the original Powerpuff Girls great was the insightful commentaries, the quick, dark but clever humor, unforgettable side characters and villains. And even if you didn't mind them focusing on the girls, to me, they almost feel identical. By episode 10, Bubbles feels like an almost exact replica of Starfire from Teen Titans Go! Powerpuff Girls is at number 9 because it's certainly not the worst. But in my opinion, Powerpuff Girls 2016 does not do the original cartoon credit. And coming in at number eight, Extreme Ghostbusters, AKA Ghostbusters Dark. You can tell it's good because it's extreme. Instead of getting the original cast, like in the real Ghostbusters, this time we get a bunch of hip college kids who are so gnarly that they make me want to burn my local college down. Real slick, bro. Who needs those old geezer original Ghostbusters when we have hip, cool college kids? Because, you know, if there's one thing we know, it's that no one misses the original Ghostbusters. Pfft, who needs them? I don't mind a cartoon trying to change up the cast a bit, 
But do they have to make the main characters such raging scumbags? Back off, Eduardo! Why? She's legal! The only voice acting I liked was Egon, voiced by Maurice LaMarche, voice of Brain. And once again, the ever-lovely Kath Soucy, voicing Kylie. But aside from that, Extreme Ghostbusters is just another shameless attempt to once again cash in on the Ghostbusters franchise. And for number 7... The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. I may have adored Sonic growing up, but damn, this show is just a nonsensical, insane garbage heap. The animation is the laziest Deke animation has ever done. And that's against some stiff competition for Deke. And the stories are all completely irrational and insane. The challenging part of this cartoon is spotting a character who's not so stupid that they could pass as a village idiot. How did we go from this? to this. Where's the relation between the two? Both have something that resembles a blue hedgehog. I'm waiting. Some people say that Sonic Underground is worse, but at least that had an original story and concept, and variety in their cast, and acceptable animation. I may have loved this cartoon growing up, but the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog started off bad, got worse around the middle, and the less said about the end, the better. Number 6. Lunatics Unleashed. In the year 2772, in the dark, bleak space future of Acmetropolis. Acmetropolis? Really? Ugh. Oh. Anyway, the Looney Tunes are struck by a comet, turning them into extreme super ninja cyber pirate space heroes. I don't know what to make of this. It's like some strange, fevered Looney Tunes nightmare. It's Looney Tunes, except it's not at all funny. Because why would you want to make the Looney Tunes funny? Well, at least it's better than what she used to call you. I'm gonna call it right now and say these Looney Tunes are lame. And that's coming from someone who spends his Friday nights watching Let's Plays of 80 Sierra RPGs. And there's little else to say about Lunatics Unleashed. It takes itself far too seriously. The stories are so cliched post-apocalyptic setting that the 20 minutes for these episodes just drags on. The dialogue is as bland as tofu, and the action scenes were just filled with these tormenting, seizure-inducing flashes over and over. Honestly, the only thing I like about these lousy cartoon remakes is that they have kept Robert Paulson in a job for over two decades. And he deserves it, but this cartoon does not. And the fifth worst cartoon remake is... The Garfield Show. I loved Garfield growing up, and used to repeatedly watch Garfield specials from the video store every week. But how did they manage to botch up Jim Davis's simple, lovable, Monday-hating lazy boy this bad? The ugly CG on Garfield show reminds me of Fanboy and Chum Chum. Cheap, lazy, and obnoxiously kid-friendly. Sometimes, Garfield will randomly go cross-eyed. No particular reason. Just because the Korean sweatshop animators were on a strict deadline to get these 3D papery spherical abominations back to the studios. The Garfield Show was the best example of a cheap CG remake cash-in that I could think of. While I really enjoy a lot of Jim Davis's original Garfield cartoons, I keep thinking these bizarre CG transfusions are gonna eat my soul. <laughs> <laughs> All of Garfield's original cynical personality is gone, replaced with a strange orange CG lump of clay dough with no distinct personality whatsoever beyond liking lasagna. And whenever I hear Garfield talk in this cartoon, I keep getting this strange urge to step on him. It asked me if it was, and then had like a mouth and it was talking, and it was the new generation deserves a bit of the original Garfield's charming cynicism. I do still recommend Garfield and Friends if you can find it. The number four... Teen Titans Go! How can we not talk about this one? Has there 
ever been a bigger middle finger to its predecessor than Teen Titans Go. We have directors who openly admit that they know what they're making is stupid, but that's okay because it's only for kids. It's like the creator is fueled by the hatred of fans, drawing upon it to make his cartoon stronger. It has been the good life. I often wonder if the creator was just an internet troll who wanted to make a bunch of Teen Titans fans furious. So he created the ultimate dump on a classic cartoon. What remains mind boggling about this franchise is that it wasn't just a cheap knockoff of the originals. It was like the creators were going out of their way to destroy everything the original characters were. Sophisticated stories, complex characters, sharp action scenes. Forget all that, we have toilet jokes. And just for the hell of it, they decided to cross over with a new Powerpuff Girls series. Because why not? We've truly eviscerated any dignity our own franchise might have once had. Why not spread our path of destruction onto another classic franchise that is already struggling to be remade properly? As I've mentioned, some of the new episodes are showing markable improvements, but they're still outnumbered by the sheer vapid stupidity. It's not a harmful show or anything, but it's just so stupid. And the third worst cartoon remake is Tom and Jerry Kids. Frankly, just the kids concept in general. Tom and Jerry Kids, Muppet Kids, Flintstone Kids, Looney Tunes Kids, and any kids franchise. For the longest time, you could not escape these cartoons. They were like a bad smell, emanating their stench through every single child's channel. Nothing made me want to play outside more than watching these unfunny contrived snore fests. Whenever a network adds kids to the end of a cartoon title, I immediately think a cheap cash grab to capitalize on a younger demographic that doesn't know any better. I've never actually seen a kids franchise that actually made me laugh. Unless you count maybe Tiny Toons? But even when that's good, it's still a lot more mediocre than the original Looney Tunes. Tiny Toons was definitely the best of them though. Every kids franchise had the same stupid formula. Drop the animation budget so low that only under fives wouldn't find the visuals insultingly ugly, and throw out a bunch of contrived stories and zero brain side characters with no memorability whatsoever. As long as they're capitalizing on the original cartoons, who cares? After all, it's only kids. Here's an idea. Why not Tom and Jerry adults? Fortunately, this kid's habit died out quickly after the 90s. And the second worst cartoon remake is... Yo Yogi, Yo 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 Yogi. Oh come on, really? Yo Yogi? I admit, I'm not a Hanna-Barbera fan, but Yogi Bear really was a boring cartoon to begin with. Come on, let's do our starving bears act, boo boo. Pretty much every single episode consisted purely of Yogi seeing a picnic basket and somehow aggravating the local park ranger. It wasn't a hard formula to remake. So how did they mess it up this bad? Yo Yogi is just everything bad about the 90s. Yogi Bear is cool now. As long as your definition of cool is your grandma wearing a sombrero. How do Yogi Bear and skateboards have anything in common? At least Quack Pack kind of made sense in its 90s pandering dribble. This is just the literal dictionary definition of 90s pandering. Yo Yogi is the devil's anus of bad. Let's make the already bland Hanna-Barbera cast trendy and hip by giving them all the latest in skin-tight volleyball equipment. This is nothing but a little fashion statement. I call it for the zone. Yogi Bear looks like he's trying to pull off a drag queen act. Yo Yogi was so badly received that Hanna-Barbera never produced another Yogi Bear cartoon ever again afterwards. Because this is the kind of cartoon that Joseph Barbera would come back from the dead to stop. Chances are he saw this and rose from the grave just to shut down the deformed, hideous, lurching pile that Hanna-Barbera has become. Goodbye, Yogi Bear, and good riddance. And before we get to number one, I'd like to give a few quick dishonorable mentions. Rugrats all grown up. I could personally never watch a full episode of this remake. While I realized it would be tough to follow up from the only Nickelodeon cartoon as popular as Spongebob, 
How could Tommy, Chucky, Phil, and Lil possibly grow up to be so incredibly boring? Even Angelica seemed to lose all her tenacity in life, instead just being a passive-aggressive teenage girl. Teen Titans Go! and Powerpuff Girls crossover. This is going to sound odd, but this was actually really good. Like, really well put together and funny, wonderfully self-aware, quick jokes, and actually kind of clever. I actually recommend this crossover. It's episode 40, season 3. Ren and Stimpy Adult Party Cartoon. Oh no, I am not touching this thing again. The only reason it's not on the list is because it doesn't deserve any more attention. Live Action Cartoon Remakes. These are probably getting their own list because they take up the whole list otherwise. And jeebus, some of these ones are bad. And with those said, here we go. And the number one worst cartoon remake is... Every single Scooby-Doo remake for the last 40 years. I am so sick of Scooby-Doo. Every repetitive, stupid reiteration of this annoying mutt. <laughs> to say Scooby-Doo has overstayed his welcome is the understatement of the century. Scooby-Doo hasn't just overstayed his welcome. He's kicked the house owners in the nads, parked himself in their living room for over 30 years, and sleeps with the house owner's wife every night. I cannot think of another cartoon that has just so refused to die. How do they keep remaking these second-rate cartoons? And each one is just as humdrum, uninspired, tedious and monotonous as the last. The original cartoon was nothing special. It was a pretty standard Laurel and Hardy setting, with some boring teens solving mysteries through scientific reasoning. But God, there are over 90 remakes of this lurching monstrosity. I am dead freaking serious. Scooby-Doo goes to Hollywood. Aloha Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo and Shaggy-Doo, a pup named Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo, Scooby-Doo and the Samurai Sword, the freaking Samurai Sword. The new Scooby-Doo, the new new Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo gets a clue, Scooby-Doo meets Batman. What does any kid actually sit down and go, oh wow, Scooby-Doo is on. Scooby-Doo is just pure cartoon white noise. Kids will have it on in the background because there is no other cartoons on TV at the time. It is the most bland, redone standard cartoon formula in existence. At least Teen Titans Go! has a more creative concept and hasn't been repeated for over 40 years. The Scooby-Doo franchise is the most shameless cash cow ever conceived by man. Most of the Hanna-Barbera remakes died out in the 90s, but somehow, kids just kept watching this thing. I never want to hear that stupid catchphrase from that grating voice again. Scooby-Dooby-Doo! Shaggy and Scooby get a clue, and Be Cool Scooby-Doo are just this generation's current bland reiteration of that stupid brown mutt. The only mystery left in Scooby-Doo is how does this series still keep going? Just bad dog, bad, bad dog. Go home and never, ever return. <sighs> but cartoon remakes actually have the potential to be something really amazing. Despite the bad examples I gave here, cartoon remakes have the power to introduce a new generation to an otherwise forgotten classic cartoon series, and introduce new generations to a little of the wonder we grew up with ourselves. With a little affection, interest, and hard work, cartoon remakes can take an old forgotten classic and bring new life to it. Do you think I missed a particular cartoon remake? If you think so, feel free to leave your own thoughts in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.